<laughs> oh, Radhe. <laughs> when will I become a guest on the pathways of Vrindavana's kunjas? Sitting on the bank of the Yamuna, <clears throat> aspiring for the service of Vrisha Banu's daughter. Oh Radhe, when will I become a guest on the pathways? of Vrindavana's kunjas sitting on the bank of the Yamuna aspiring for the service of Vrishabhanu's daughter. The Yamuna River is the daughter of the sun, Bhanu. And Radhika is the daughter of Vrishabhanu. The sun in the sign of Taurus. And thus, they are sisters. Bound by the ropes of firm hopes, Sripad Saraswati prays to Srimati's <clears throat> lotus feet. O Vrishabhanu Nandini, when will I, who sits on the bank of the Yamuna, hoping for your service, become a guest on the pathways of Vrindavana's kunchas. Radhe, Radhe. I will just say something like uh, some small introduction because this is uh, first words in all complex of four verses which are coming together. So this is a strong connection between 198 words, 199, 200, and 201. These four verses are very connected. And let's see what will happen today. Maybe we will not read all of them. But it is just some note that the devotees knows that sometimes verses are connect in very close connection with each other. And what does it mean, connection? It means that it's covering, they are covering specific lila. But before the lila starts, some mood, preparation mood is necessary. And here, Prabhupada the Saraswati is giving the beginning of that mood in which he will continue to meditate on the rest of the lila. So in very humble mood, he is approaching Radhika with this beautiful, humble prayer and said, Oh Radhe, I want to be the guest on the pathways of Rindavan. So he's saying very nicely, I just want to be a guest.
on your paths, and I want to sit on Yamuna, bank of Yamuna, aspiring for service of Rishabhanuna. So he is using this two words are very important. I want to be guest. And what guest is doing? He's not ordering. He's not demanding. He's aspiring. So in this very humble way, she, he show us, sadakas, how we should approach to our meditation, to our bhajan, our conversations, sharings, our listening, our kata, with full eagerness, but also with full humility. And sometimes he is showing in, in his words, in verses, different verses, also his humility and say, I want to become a broom. I want to become a broom for cleaning your kunja. In the hands of your loving maidservants. And that's the point. In the hands of your loving maidservant. So here, he's saying, I want to be a guest. Baba will explain later. But i just giving this small introduction that we try to tune our hearts on his heart. Because this kind of humility is very rare in the world. And this kind of humility is possible only for someone who has a pure love. Result of this pure love is humility. And humility brings, attracts pure love. So many times we were listening and reading and sharing how it's very important to connect ourselves with the feelings of acharyas. Because this is the way how love can be infused in our hearts. But there is one more symptom, which is very necessary to be infused in our hearts. And this is humility. When we are connected emotionally with spiritual emotions, with rasic devotees, pure devotees, their feelings are coming like a strong stream in our hearts, in the hearts of Sadak. And with these feelings, also humility is coming. So this is the reason why we need to follow Anugatya, those who are in our desirable bhava, in our case in Manjar bhava, because through these feelings, love for Radharani will come, but also all other qualities with pure love will be infused in the heart of Sadhguru. And Sripat here very humbly, but eagerly. Praise to Radhika. I want to be your guest. And I want to aspire for your service. Oh, Vrishabhanu Nandini. So we can see here that eagerness and humbleness, humility, are very really close to each other. 
we have maybe experiences that we are when we are eager for something we are very impatient and not so much humble but in kingdom of pure love eagerness is very close to the humility it cannot be separated it's not independent from humility and Prabhupada and Saraswati is praying Vrishabhanu's daughter he is specifically is saying Rade Vrishabhanu because he is very eager to attain this position of embodiment of love but in the same time he is ready to be a guest not demanding not pushing not forcing with full expectation that radhika will give him a mercy because she is a rishabhanu nandini full of mercy mercy but in the same time he is very humble in approaching and giving her his desires and say i want to be a guest and this kind of guests is someone who is asking madukari you know that to be a guest sometimes it can be complicated to receive the guests because in in the world guests needs to be served isn't it and this is the duty of the host to serve the guest and guest expecting to be served but in kingdom of pure love we hear from the mouth of prabodha nanda saraswati shripad who is saying i want to be a guest because i want to serve you in your kunja and this is madukari which i am humbly and patiently and with strong determination in the same time i waiting for you my vrishabhan nanda i want to be a guest that you is like a good host you receive me in your kunja so that i can serve you so we can see here that to be a guest in kunja is completely different than to be a guest in material world but through material relationships we can learn this hospitality but also we we should learn what does it mean to be guest in someone house it means to be very humble because someone is giving everything to you food bed for sleeping water nice words and so on and so on so on so this is madukari. with mood of madukari prabhupada nanda saraswati is approaching radhika glorifying her and praying to her so this is this is the beginning of the words this beginning of the words is like an introduction what will go on later and later radhika the wise ah cha bound by the firm by the ropes of firm hopes shri pada saraswati prays 
the Srimati's lotus feet. O Vrishabhanunandir, when will I, who sits on the bank of the Yamuna, hoping for your service, become a guest on the pathways of Vrindavana's kunjas? The wise call that person whose name, family, or residence is not known and who suddenly comes to one's house an atiti or a guest. It is a great fault of householder not to receive a guest because a guest whose hopes are frustrated because he's sent away from the house he comes to gives the inhospitable householder all his bad karma and takes the householder's good karma with him as he leaves. Even if the host has no food to offer to his unexpected guest, he should at least offer him a resting place, a sitting place, some water or some sweet words. There is never a shor any shortage of that. Okay. So we can hear here how Baba is using Dharma Shastras. Shastras, scriptures, which are explaining Dharma, religion. He is using here description and definition, who is the guest? And what is going on when host doesn't properly receive the guest? Who is using? He is using these dharmic explanations to define who is the guest, how to receive the guest, and what are the consequences of not receiving the guests properly. So we can see here that Prabhupada Saraswati is very humble, but in the same time, he is very, very clever because he is addressing Radhika and he is saying to her, I want to be your guest. So, in these simple words are so many things behind because he wants to say, if I am your guest, I, if I knock on your door, Asking for Madhukar, you cannot reject me. And I will wait as much as it necessary. But one day you will receive me. You will be very merciful to me. So this is the cleverness and humility of Manjari. And the Nantadas Babaji is giving us introduction how to look, how to perceive this position of guests from the spiritual and also from the Dharmic conception.
An ultimate spiritual conception is I'm begging. I'm desperately begging your mercy. So please receive me. Give me that mercy as I am your guest who is knocking on your door of love, compassion. Please. I cannot do this alone. I cannot survive without you. I cannot survive without Seva for you. This is Madhukari which I am asking. Not the food, not the money, not the clothes, not the shelter. Only shelter, only food is my Seva for you. Oh, Radhe, you are Vrishabhanu's princess, the queen of Vrindavan, and an ocean of compassion. You cannot reject this wretched guest of yours. Please forget my unworthiness and fulfill my desires for your Nikunja service. When you go out to meet your beloved in Vrindavana's Kunjas, this wretched maid servant will be waiting for you sitting on the pathways on the bank of the Yamuna. If you do not bestow your mercy on me, then I will not leave this seat. That is my firm vow. Surely you will bestow your mercy on this fallen maiden when you see her sitting there. You are Krishna's Aradhika, worshipper, and I can be of great help to you. O Prema Mai, will you not bless this paid servant? with your loving, devotional service. Oh, Radhe. When will that fortune be mine? That I can forget everything and sit on the bank of the Yamuna becoming a guest on the pathways to Vrindavana's kunjas. the end of verse. So this is the end. <clears throat> and Baba is giving commentary and saying, how Sripad is so intelligent, so clever, so sensitive, and at the same time, so humble. And he's addressing Radhika. He said, oh, you are Rishabhanu's princess. I want to be a guest in your kunja, and you are the princess. You are even the queen of Rindavana, he is saying that. And not only that, you are ocean of compassion. So it means that you have everything for everyone. 
because everything is present in your divine love. All opulences, all qualities, especially love and compassion. So I am a beggar. I am asking the Madhukari to serve your kunja and please re receive me like simple, your maid servant, because I am ready to wait and wait and wait. So this is the de determination of someone who is strongly fixed in his loving Ishtadev and who is fixed in his spiritual identity, his spiritual position. He's saying, if you don't bestow your mercy, it's okay. But I will not leave this seat on the bank of Yamuna. So this is the sign of someone who is very focused and determined. I need your mercy. And I know that you are princess, your embodiment of love, your queen of freedom. You can give me this, your embodiment of compassion. You can give me this. But this is your free will, my beloved Swami. Even if you don't want to give me, I will continue to sit and aspire for your devotion service. I will not move any inch from this seat. I will sit there on this place and patiently and humbly, with full eagerness, wait your mercy. So this is determination of someone who is focused on his goal. Because if you don't bestow your mercy, I will continue to beg. And he's not saying, if you don't bestow your mercy, I will find someone else. This is not the mood of someone who has a pure love in his heart. You can love me, you can embrace me, you can reject me, you can do whatever you want. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is singing. But you are be always my beloved and I will be your maidservant. So this is the preparation for consciousness to enter deeper in the levels of the lila. To know who is my goal, what is my goal, how to attain this goal, and what is my position. I don't see Gurudev here, but if you don't mind, I will read his short words. He is present, but I would like to glorify his great words about this Vrishabhanu Nandini. And he is saying, I choose yes, just this small part. So we should take shelter in the kingdom of Radhika. The kingdom of love. Without love, nothing is possible. This love doesn't mean 
material love. It means love from your spiritual identity, from your spiritual senses. I just took his words because so many times he is speaking about this position of Radhika like a Vrishabhan on underneath. Because her father has a more opulent kingdom than Nanda Maharaj. Because in his family, personal embodiment of love appeared. Embodiment of love, embodiment of compassion. And this is the reason why Prabhupada, Prabhupada Nanda Saraswati is saying in the beginning of the words, Orade, and then in the end, you are Vrishabhanu's daughter. You are full of opulences. You can give everyone whatever he needs. And I just want to be a guest on the paths of your Nikunja. So this is such a small thing which I'm begging from you. Just to be a guest who will aspire for your service. Why aspire? Because I know you have to give me Kripa to serve you. If you don't, Give me a Kripa for service. I will con it's okay also. I will continue to aspire. If you don't give me, I'm ready to continue to spend all my life in aspiration for your devotional service. So this is the mood of pure devotee. And this mood has to be infused in the hearts of sadakas. Love and humbleness. And Baba is finishing and say, I, when will that fortune be mine? That I can forget everything. So he wants to be a guest who will forget everything else, all other doors. He will not knock on the other doors, begging for the mercy. He will he will wants to forget all material desires, all material conceptions, all material rituals, religions, and everything. And then I will sit on the bank of Yamuna. Who can sit so with so much determination on the bank of Yamuna or bank of Radhakunda or on the pathways? Of Vrindavana, who can sit so fixed? Only someone who is in deep love, and because of that deep love, he forget he forgot everything else. Love brings determination, not mental strong mind. No. Love brings determination, love brings humility, but love which is coming from spiritual identity, not material senses. And in that way, Baba, Anathadas Babaji is finishing his commentary, preparing our consciousness for the next words. Hundred. 99. If someone wants to comment, to share something, 
I don't see you again. So we should continue. If devotees from Munger connect again, please let us know. Yes, thank you. Verse one hundred and ninety-nine. We're here, and by the way. We're hearing you. Thank you. Just go on. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Is there someone? Who wants to share something, please? Do I know you want to Suniti, Gora, you, Davaji, <coughs> anyone else? Before we continue in other words. Yes, Jainanda will have a word, just a moment. Oh, okay. 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 Uh, so, <clears throat> can you hear? We can hear, and now we can see you even. <laughs> can you hear? Yes, yes, Janandaji. So, actually, I love this bus because. Uh, I don't know many, everybody may not know, especially in Brindaban, there is a system of <coughs> Madhukari Zula. <coughs> so in India, traditionally, guests host must take care of guests. This is must. And if in Brindaban, if someone go to Madukari, then host has to give something they want. Like I remember uh, once one, 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 I think one Baba or Sanyashi come to Hadai Pandit place. Hadai Pandit means Nitai, Nitai is the father. So Nita is the father is a very aristocratic, nice Brahmin, Brahmana. <clears throat> so Hadai Pandit asking this, uh, this kind of sannyasi denunciation. So what can I do for you? Please tell me, what do you want? And then this, this uh, kind of beggar sannyasi say, can I need one thing? Would you give me? Yes, I try to give you whatever you like. I need your son because I'm old person. I need someone who can support, support, yeah, serve me. <clears throat> Then Hadai Pandit was very shocked because nobody asked, you know, son, please give me your son. But this Baba asking, this Vedic culture, they are following Veda. He has to give whatever, you know, whatever a beggar wants. So had I found it a crying, okay, I give my son to you. So this is a baby system. I also experienced in begging in Vrindavan. I did sometimes. I did the... Tell the story for you. So we did the parikiram, under parikiram. So we did uh, say about uh, 50 devotees. We, we walk around all Braja Mandara once on foot. So at that time, you know, some in, sometime I go with the Indian devotee. Then I come. 
we can we can do madukari then we went to brajavachi's house and they 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 the kind of you know they have chapati and sabji you know roti sabji etc and they give you know they give us and that chapati was so tasty like green you know green green so we are like uh, i read through it Internet breaks are in rundown. What to do? It's not stable connection. I think you can continue now. They fell out completely. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Gopika. Thank you. Rasama, you can continue. So this is verse 199. An indescribable reservoir of great nectarian flavors and wonderful pastimes named Radha always dwells in the kunjas on the bank of the Yamuna. An indescribable reservoir of great nectarian flavors and wonderful pastimes named Radha always dwells in the kunjas on the bank of the Yamuna. Sripada, in his Kinkari Swarup, sits on the bank of the Yamuna, anxiously hoping for Srimati's service. Um, can you hear? Can you hear? <laughs> Sorry. Say something. Say something. Uh, can you hear? Yes. yes. Now we can. Yes, we can hear you now. Yes, we can hear you now. Okay. So I I, I talked here, but I I repeat again. So you know I I came in front of Radharani as beggar. I know you are most merciful person. You are universal mother. Compared to you, you are dire. You are full of mercy. So I came in front of you as beggar. So I have only one desire. I want to beg from you. Please give me your intimate, intimate seva as Kinkari. Please give me Swarupa City as Kinkari, your intimate male seva. 
This is only my desire. I'm beggar. You are Swamini. All, all, all over the world. Not only material world, whole spiritual world, whole Braja. You are Braja. You are Brajishwari. You are Korean of Braja. I'm beggar. I want to one thing. Give me your intimate service as King Kari. Please give me. This is my only wish. So if I say like this, Swami must give to me. Otherwise, many people blame you. I blame you. You are not merciful. I know you are merciful. Whatever devotee need, you must supply it. For mother, I am Manjari. Please feel free me, please. So after reading this verse, my meditation changed as Sadakadeha. And the Siddhadeha has a dimension difference. As Sadakadeha, I come to you. I came to Vrindavan in front of you, Radha Mohan, especially Radha Ram. Please give me your mercy. I have one desire <laughs> to become your intimate so I repeat the verse one hundred and ninety nine, an indescribable reservoir of great nectarian flavors and wonderful pastimes named Radha always dwells in the kunjas on the bank of the Yamuna. Shri Pada, in his King Kariswaru, sits on the bank of the Yamuna, anxiously hoping for Shri Mati's service. As she sees that Vrindavana is suddenly illuminated by a golden aura. The maidservant immediately gets up and ecstatically sees that Shiradika has come to the bank of the Yamuna to meet her beloved. All of Swamini's limbs are playing on the waves of the desire to meet her beloved. While she enters the thrusting kunja, the maidservant follows her inside and sees that she is the very form of a great abundance of indescribable nectarian flavors. It is as if the formless abundance of prema rasa assumes the form of Vrishabhanu's princess. Rade, 
we can just shortly stop here. So we can see here that after waiting like a guest and on the bank of Yamuna and aspiring for the service in Nikunja, Radhika is appearing. And Sripad in his kinkari form, first of all, he sees this beautiful golden effulgence which pervades all Vrindavan. This golden color, golden effulgence is so intense because Radhika is very passionate and her body emanates more intense golden color, golden light because of her passion to meet her beloved. So because of that intense desire to meet Krishna, her body is shining through all Vrindavan and all movable and unmovable beings are becoming colored in the golden color of her love. So we can see here that all spiritual life the world, sorry, spiritual world is pervaded by the color of love. But also, material world is also pervaded with the color of love. Although conditioned souls cannot perceive it, But material world cannot exist without the existence of spiritual love. All material, spiritual worlds are existing and nourished in the same time with love. Although from a materialistic perspective, it's not so obvious, but Acharyas are trying to open our eyes Oma Jnana Timirandasya, to open our eyes and hearts that we can see this love present everywhere, even in material world. And this is the reason why we need the help of someone who is already drowning and diving in this ocean is in this great reservoir of great nectarian love or great nectarian flavors. And this is Shimakaradika. Krishna also wants to dive and drown himself in this reservoir. So suddenly Radhika appears after waiting of Sripad. She appears in the form of light. Then he's jumping, enlightened with this beautiful light. And suddenly he sees Radhika in her form with all her, his, her qualities ready for the pastimes with her lover. And he's saying in this last sentence, in this paragraph, it is as if the formless abundance of prema, abundance of prema rasa, assumes the form of Rishabhanu's princess. 
So when we speak about love, very often, spontaneously, we think that love is a feeling, some emotional sensation, and it is energy, actually. And we can see that in many places in Shastras, love is explained like an energy. Prema, Hladini Shakti, energy. But in spiritual world, everything is a person. Everything is a person. And Radhika is the personified embodiment of this pure transcendental love. So when we speak about love, actually devotees of Srimati Radharani always have conception, no, this is Srimati Radharani. We can speak about Hladini Shakti, we can speak about Prema, pervading transcendental world, material world, but devotees of Shimati Radharani always knew my Radhika is pervading material world, like the Bahirangi Shakti, and my Radhika is pervading spiritual world. And I want to be always with her. Even if I have to be a guest who is aspiring for her mercy patiently waiting for her mercy. So this is the move of Tripa, how now he is jumping to receive Srimati Radhika. And we can see here that just by sharing these commentaries and these words, we can be in bhajan. By listening these words of our acharyas and commentaries of our rasik acharyas, we have opportunity at least one hour, two hours, to be deeply immersed in bhajan of transcendental pastimes. This is the greatness and great mercy of this Zoom Sanghas. That at least two hours, one hour, <laughs> we can be immersed in bhajan, but because on the screen of our mind, on the screen of our heart, all these words of beautiful, sweet, loving acharyas, will automatically appear and remove all other thoughts and desires. Through their words, we can see the light in Vrindavan. And behind that light, which is love, through their words, we can see Srimati Radharani. So I said something, if someone wants to share. You are leaving me alone to speak. <laughs> it's not fair. But we have to surrender what to do. Please Knowing for sure that her beloved is going to come, Srimati blissfully decorates the Tristing Kunja, and the maid servant hands, hands her the necessary soft flowers and sprouts. Different 
wonderful, flower-like bhavas, ecstatic emotions, erupt on Srimati's wine-like body when she remembers all the artful Rasika pastimes she played with her Nagara. And this causes the maid servant to think of her as the wonderful Kelly Nidhana, the reservoir of pastimes. Srimati can make her Nagara relish pleasure that he could not even dream of. And this makes her enjoy great happiness at every moment. So we can see here how Radhika is eager to give Krishna, her lover, all reservoir of her heart, all reservoir of her feelings. Completely selflessly. And at the same time, her dasi, her kinkari, wants to give all her heart to Swamini. And she is ready to wait like a guest, <laughs> patiently, on the bank of Yamuna for that opportunity to give all her heart. This is Madhukari, which I am begging, to give you my heart. Usually we think Madhukari is to take something. Someone else has to give us. But no, Madhukari, this kind of Madhukari is, I'm waiting opportunity to give you my heart and my seva. And in the commentary of the previous words, Baba is saying words, words of Prabhupada Saraswati, when he is saying, and I can be of great help to you. I can be so helpful to you. And now in these words is explained how Manjari is helpful to Swamani, who is completely intoxicated of love and desire to give the love to her beloved. Finally, Manjari receives the Madhukari to pick up the flowers, to bring Swamini flowers and other necessary ingredients to make Kunja very nicely. So this is the only desire of someone who doesn't have any other desires. But only to surrender to Radhika and to wait for her mercy, for devotion and service. Without surrendering, there is no possibility to patiently Wait and live in this conception of I am the guest on the bank of your lake or on Yamuna. Prabhupada Saraswati, with great humility, is waiting the mercy because he is completely surrendered. And this is what we should learn from these Acharyas. That at least something come, some drop comes 
in our heart, some drop of their feelings and their mood. And the way how they are approaching to Shiratika, we have to learn it. From whom? From those who are expert in that. And this means following. So this is the end of 199 words. And then it's starting 200. So you can see here how the mood is important to follow through all these beautiful sentences, words of our Acharya. Our Shiva Prada is, while he was writing the song one, he said, every word of Acharya Rasik Bhakta is a jewel. But when we put these words, this jewel together, we make a necklace. So every sentence of our acharyas is the necklace of valuable jewels, of their words. So we should learn how to approach to this richness, to these valuable things. This is art also. How to approach to something which is so valuable. Radhi. Verse 200. Oh, can I share something before we fall out? Please. Here? Finally. Because... Yeah, it's on and off for us, and we are very yes. eager to hear you. And I just hear your last uh, sentence when you said it's an art how to approach or how to beg and how to or receive, I guess. And this morning, Guru wanted me or us, we were some devotees, to go out and receive a guest. And then I was just like my naughty self, which who I am, you know like a naughty, only naughty little girl. And I opened the door of Gurudev's room and there was this Indian gentleman, he had a car and he was, his car was in front of the Guru Samadhi. And then I went like, you know, just like this. <laughs> will you come? And then Gurudev was behind progress. and he said, will you not go and receive the guest nicely? And I said, yes, I'm so impersonal. Then we have, we went there and we said, Radhe Radhe, welcome to Sadhana Maharaj, who would like to see you. And then we uh, guided them inside and we gave them some nice sweets. And so this is also the art that we are developing here in the Gurudev's guidance, how to behave rightly in front of guests that are unexpected or expected, and Gurudev is always giving a little bit more of this expertise, how to be, you know, sweet and gentle, and be very welcoming and very personal and very friendly, all these qualities that we need to always also back Srimati Radhika. Will you not give me your mercy this time? Please, I invite you. My heart has been rubbed and Gurudev has made it very clear. Please come and enlighten my consciousness so I can serve you as your Dasi. That is also an art. And that came to my mind, my heart when I heard your last sentence. It's an art. <laughs> la -di -la -di. Yes. La -di -la -di. Thank you, Sanitiji. So nice example, and Gurudev is always, and all Acharyas are actually our living examples. And if we just use our visualization, we can see how Acharyas who are not present physically here, they are also giving us 
such a simple, nice examples. I want yes. to be a guest. I want to be a guest who will serve you in your home. <laughs> and that's the point. This is Vaishnavism. This is Vaishnava. Materialistic person, I want to be a guest, is very someone who is very determined to be a guest. He wants to be served, isn't it? But some Vaishnava who has a pure love, pure love means always serving, always serving. I want to be a guest. I want to find a way how I can enter your house. Please. This is my Madhukari. This is my Madhukari. I want to give you, not only to receive and to get it. I want to give you my seva with full of my heart. This kind of Madhukari, I'm waiting to re reciprocate, re <laughs> reciprocate to you. So this is the sensitivity of Vaishnavism, of pure bhakti, especially like Sunitiji said in Vrindavan. Wow. And it's possible only to learn from Rajavasis, nowhere, from nowhere. <laughs> yes, and I also want to share one thing that Gurudev, because we had a very beautiful and deep Russian Zoom this morning, and um, then, of course, always Gurudev is asking, how was the Zoom, was the, what was the subject? And I said, wow, this Damodar Prabhu, he has so many deep realizations. <clears throat> he was guiding us with his uh, word from Rati to Rupa in explaining how to have this eagerness and then come, you know, by the mercy of Srimati Radhika, by the guidance in her love and in her light, that also we can see our own form and her form. This was the subject. So I said this to Gurudev and I was, uh, you know, I was giving so much enthusiasm about Damada Prabhu who was so you know, guiding us lovingly also, like me, I'm a guest, I don't know about this, but he had some more realizations. So he said, and I pray, and I wish for all of you that this will be happening to you. And then Gurude smiled and he said, all my disciples will become like this. Jai Ho! <laughs> so nice to be yeah. good association. How to, to go yeah, wow. and how to go from, it was, uh, I think it was 171, no, I forgot which was, yeah. which was, was it, Udav was there, you forgot this morning? Uh, it was how to, it was the subject that Swamini is decorating the kunj and, and putting lights everywhere, and the maid servant is also putting lights. In, in this eagerness that she has. And then the light is there on her appears. Yes, and then this light is gushing out of her body. And so, and then Baba was explaining, that is the light also that came through Gauranga. That is the light of Srimati Radhika's Lavanya, her orange, and also her passionate love for Mohan. And this light is so powerful. Not only it comes to Goranga, but it comes also to the maidservant who is eagerly praying, how can I serve you, Swamini? And then uh, Damodar Prabhu was explaining that this meditation is powerful if it's done with a lot of feelings from my side, from our side. This eagerness with feelings. And then he said, then this light of Swamini's form will enlighten my form, my spiritual form. And that is uh, actually what Gurudev always explained, without Rati, no Rupa. So he was about these feelings and this eagerness, and then we can feel ourselves, or not only feel, we can see our forms. Because this light, this golden uh, lavanya that is gushing out of Swamini's transcendental body when she is waiting for Mohan, also will enlighten our my form, or everybody's form who is eager for this and give us to see her form. That was the subject. And Gurudev gave a blessing that all of his disciples will be like that. Means all of us 
we will be able to see ourselves and Swamini sooner or later. Wow. I I know I go through the feeling. Like we say, oh my jnana to me. Actually, this is come from Guru Dev's Mukhota's mouth. As Manjari, rather than Gota speak, this is uh, this uh, effulgence is coming. So if rather than is effulgence coming, means we have Swarupa, I know we have Ishtanishta, then this lightning debuted Swamini's form, also our form. Because in the darkness, we cannot see each other. But if Swamini give us some light, then we can see you. We can see myself. This morning, in the monolithic time, someone does that in completely darkness. Yeah. No electricity. No electricity. And even Pujar is asking us, give me a lamp. <laughs> give me a torch. Give me a torch. <laughs> this is maybe first time, maybe, you know. And then, you know, one devotee, you know, brought, you know, like a set, you know, like a phone and torching and then starting. Then finally, uh, final, you know, final, I don't know, how many, Maybe Jairade or something. Then at that time, writing. Mm. <laughs> then, oh my God, this is, we could see you now. We could see myself. Also, we could see my friend. Oh my God, this is uh, actually mercy. Without mercy of Radhika, we cannot have uh, Ishta Nishta, also Swarma Nishta. And then we could also see Guru, Guru Manjari with, with us. Always Guru Manjari was guiding us. Mm -hmm. That is, you know, this morning we, we felt and uh, the, the word of Suniti Didi, I just got some inspiration. <laughs> Radhe, Radhe, I don't know, maybe you heard how Rasamayi was reading. Verse 200, in the beginning, how Shripad was waiting and waiting like a guest on the bank of Yamuna, and suddenly, golden aura appear. Wow. Yeah, he yes, saw golden is, uh, aura first, <laughs> is pervading mm -hmm. all Vrindavan, and what he did, he jumped. He jumped completely. So we can see like you already, I don't want to repeat your words, but it's very nice that we make connection because it's on the first paragraph of verse 199 is explained actually how this love is appearing like a golden aura. Mm -hmm. And it's connection, like you said, with Goranga in Kali Yuga, golden. <laughs> Avatara, golden aura of love of Mahabhava, personified, first appear to remove the darkness of the humanity. And then maid servant immediately jumps. Immediately, when this light is coming, then Swarup is coming, like Jaina Daji said. And this is the mercy of Goranga. Wow. Without Goranga, this light cannot enlighten our heart in the form of Swarup. We need mercy of Goranga. And then the Goranga will say, who always loves this. Yes. Then the tears will come. Then the tears will come. Yes. When our heart becomes enlightened, with this golden aura, 
of Mahabhava Swarupi and Jai Shri Radhe. So this is the reason why Prabhupada is waiting like a guest <laughs> to jump and immediately to start to serve. Because when he receives and he sees the light of Shrimati Radharani, he knows, oh, I receive my desirable Madhukari. Now I have to give her my madhu, my seva. Otherwise, what I have to give if she doesn't give to me. Yeah. So maybe it's too late to continue on uh, verse 200 because it will be, we can continue later on next time because 200 and 201 are also connected. So maybe we can meditate until next Saturday, <laughs> at least for this position, how Prabhupada Saraswati has a proper mood of meditation, expectation, approaching, the art of approaching to Shrimati Radhika, how she is appearing because she is satisfied with him. She is appearing, bringing the light in his heart, showing them his form, her form, sorry, her form, preparing him for seva. And he automatically runs to pick the flowers, bring the flowers to Radhika, and help her to decorate the kunja for her beloved. Then we will see what's going on in kunja and Radhika's different moods in 200 and 201, if, you, if it's okay for you. We don't have to push. Just stay in that flow of the words of our acharyas. Gracias.